throughout this event have seemed like the strongest team by kind of leaps and bounds. They have looked real clean. And I guess the question is, can they do it again here and uh, get that victory and, and make it a 2-0 to get into, I believe, the finals of this region? Yeah, that last match didn't look very close, uh, to be honest. The I mean, individually, the, you know, the lanes were fine for both teams to, uh, to a, you know, a decent degree. Like, it wasn't a complete stomp of the lanes or anything. It's just, like, strategically, it just seems like 0-1 is, is on top things, man. Right. Like, they uh, they just look, they look really solid. Um, not an easy, not an easy task for D-Boosters to win this one, for sure, after watching the first one. We'll have to see if they can lock it up and lock it down. Not the, uh, the not begins. not the fighting that we've been seeing, or at least in the last game from what we saw. We're not going to see that. I was really hoping we'd see the five-on-five three-minute clash once again. Yeah, that was that was good stuff. That's what you like to see there. I think whenever like one team has doom. You know, like a Doom, Enigma, uh, like Morphling, these types of heroes that just are terrible at level one. Oftentimes, like, all right, guys, may maybe maybe not this game. All right, we'll, we'll go level one fight the next game. Doom just wants to farm. I'm waiting for a moment where a team kind of messes up and allows Nas to play that Enigma. It's been uh, so revered, and I, I kind of want to get a glance at it, see how good it really is. That's a good hero. That's like a really underrated hero, man. I I, th I think it's been, I think it's been overbuffed. We'll probably see Enigma at the, at the major, and I, I feel like this is just like a little, um, you know, like uh, what's 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 the word? Like, oh, I can't do English right now. <laughs> you could try Canadian. Give it a shot. Let's not can't that. do that either. Oh man. Oh, unfortunate. But I, I, if I think of the word that you're thinking of, I know chat's already thought of the word that you're thinking of. So in about five minutes time, you can just glance over at chat and be like, that was the word. And then you'll be right on uh, back into that sentence. So we'll, we'll give it some time. We'll let it fester for a bit. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's a good word. That's a really good word. Fester. Hell, yeah. I don't remember what we were talking about, but fester. <laughs> that, now that's on my mind. <laughs> I could uh, get you into something else. You got Zinq the spray over in the bottom lane, which is always fun to see. Bramble Maze and Fishman in some trouble, but say that as the other way, Mad Frog's gonna go down to Habu. But Mad Frog does claim that first blood. But not too bad. Often there. happens with Banes. I feel like you, uh, you know, you know, you're this like really. Uh, tanky, like good stats hero. You just like run in, start right clicking, and that's like, oh, I'm a little too low here. <laughs> I'll be going down. All right, I'll be. Uh, does Nos go for the dive? He does. He does. And they get the kill on Pleb. They'll take out Nas and Devil. We kind of saw this a couple times where it's like the support lives and the support ends up uh, claiming a couple lives here. Get a lot of that experience. I know earlier today I was watching uh, RNG LGD and there was an ogre that got both kills after the uh, carry had died and was foreshadowing. Sick. That was the word. I remember the word foreshadowing. <laughs> oh my god, it's such a simple word, but I just like I couldn't. I could. It was on the tip of my tongue. It's a foreshadowing that Enigma is going to be picked at the major. Anyway, there's dying happening because CK is a broken hero. 180 damage maximum from Chaos Bolt level one. Like that, that's got to be one of the highest burst damage spells in the game for a level one ability. It's wild. Yeah, it's very strong. And then you team that up with the reality rift and all of a sudden, you know, you just outputting so much. Damage. Do you like CK more in the safe lane or the off lane? Because we've seen it kind of bounce back and forth uh, throughout the regions and where they have preferred this hero. I so much That's a more. good question. I mean, I feel like it's so good on both. It, with the shard being nerfed, maybe it's a better, maybe it's a better off laner. Um, it just doesn't. If there were counters to it, I'd say it's like a bad carry. It, it's just good on both, man. CK is just like an S tier hero. I don't know. It's just good on both. 
it, it, win, it wins like any lane with any support against almost anything and like people aren't picking like phoenix underlord you know we're just seeing underlord picked up because they just fixed the uh firestorm bug that uh, wasn't doing enough damage they definitely over fixed it for a second there yeah 10 minutes to get 30 mmr yeah before that yeah, those were the days <laughs> those were the days those were the minutes <laughs> those are the good the good old days yesterday for 10 minutes <laughs> Did, uh, i didn't get a chance to get my uh free 30 mmr though no not neither did i i think i was sleeping with a patch drop i might have been taking a little bit of a snooze yeah a bit of, a bit of napping action happening which it looks like fishman he's trying to make mad frog here nap himself with that nightmare being very annoying just getting those right clicks in yeah very low armor tier on the willow bane definitely enjoys beating the crap out of her and if man frog gets a little bit too confident all of a sudden while well, there's a, a stun and a couple of right clicks coming your way goes into the shadow realm but uh not a lot of damage coming out of that level one shadow realm attack got to get through the saga first meet yugi's grandfather in the shadow realm then you start outputting some damage it's kind of both supports in that bot lane just pathetically Ooh, whacking each other will land and it's some damage on the p1 not sure it's going to be enough damage and almost turning it around they end up Ooh. getting devil with the nether ward he killed himself oh. he was going for the nuke action there he got a little excited he saw it coming he wanted it he really he really wanted to survive at like one hp there and take up p1 that was that was his hopes and dreams certainly a lot quieter of a game from 01 so far uh they had a lot of kills in the early portions of the first game they're up something like 15 3 or something like that i have no idea it, it was a lot to a little but uh storm stormer going towards the bot end of the river here drops down the dream coil takes out mad frog and that was uh you know he was one of the reasons that they were getting a lot of kills he was doing quite a bit with that uh that od and he was not only dominating his lane but getting kills on top of it too not exactly the same case here up against the mars yeah evo seems to be a lot more comfortable pressuring with this hero uh, i also think puck versus mars is a is a definitely a better matchup for mars uh you know very low armored hero on puck mars it's very difficult to dodge either the god's rebuke or the spear because they cover so many frames or are instant so uh, yeah tough tough for storm stormer here but uh he has a puck he wants to he wants to rotate to one of these lanes one of these side lanes ideally interesting that evo plays or at least in these two games he's played predominantly off lane heroes mid although sand, sand king more so being picked for its mid prowess these days yeah it really is i mean having that flexibility i think is just it's super nice for the draft it's like one of those things that you probably don't see happening so much in in pubs with like high level pub players because it's just less valuable there because there's you know not really a draft so it doesn't matter there e1 and fishman just scouting each other out going back and forth gotta be careful if you're fishman all of a sudden club will show up behind you and well, he's a Wraith King. He'll kill you pretty quickly. Though Nas is only level 5. He's in pretty far. Nightmare is out. Locks up Pleb for a second. The Stroke of Fate comes in. Ink Swell allowing Nas to retreat a little bit. And the Bramble Maze is down, but they've navigated that maze. And well, while the Dark Will is trying to say you'll never get out of the maze, they do a good job. They're out real quick. Kind of want to I just watched. Again. I just watched a very odd sequence of events while that stuff was happening top. So Funic drops a portal right in front of Evo. Evo TPs bot and then tries to go into the portal right before the portal despawns and then just walks back mid. <laughs> I'm so confused. That was a very confusing sequence of events. A bit of a miscommunication. Ooh. Ooh. Stormer got a kill and then he took out Pleb's courier with the armlet on it. Ooh. That is going to slow his game down. Arena, spear missing. Fishman, though, throws out the Nightmare. Doesn't have a Fiend's Grip. He's only level four. Storm Stormer 
We'll uh, throw out the illusory orb and jaunt back to that with the nether ward down in the Pugna beam right there. Pugna, definitely one of those heroes, uh, you know, I, I've spoke to Black about this a, a bunch and he has been screaming Pugna from rooftops over there where he lives since the patch dropped uh, back when it originally dropped. And now we're finally seeing it here in the five position all the time. He's now hoping for Huskar. I don't know if you agree with uh, a potential Huskar being uh, part of the meta. I don't know if you like that. I know a lot of people are very anti-Huskar. I mean, I'm definitely anti-Huskar, but I, I, I'm with him. I, I think Huskar is going to be uh, huge at the major. The uh, the Aghanim Scepter is just, just insane, man. I mean, BKB piercing disable. The damage goes through BKB. Burning Spears damage goes through BKB for some reason. If you get it on before the BKB, like... Yeah, the hero's the hero's wild for sure. I think I think this is there's there's actually gonna be a lot of stuff that we see at the major that we've not seen so much uh in, in DPC. Like it's it's not just gonna be a repeat of what's happening at the DPC. We just saw like OD, for example. I, I think that hero is like perfectly viable. You just need the right scenario for it. Do you think that has something to do with the fact that we've seen a lot of safe play? come out from teams like just a lot more comfort they're not willing to expand on it like uh, one of the biggest examples for me at least is i'll hold that thought as pleb gets hit with a stun but nothing more i thought maybe the doom would follow up on that i feel like lgd is one of those teams that has a big hero pool but they've played a lot of uh more safe dota and again pleb getting chased they go for the ult on habu and Nas. Not even deciding to drop down that Doom because he's got that second life. Instead, he'll throw the Doom on the Mars. They go to the Fiend's Grip. Fishman standing his ground, but Nas taking a lot of damage. He'll end up falling to Funic. The Firestorm as well as the Shadow Realm Strike. Enough damage to get the kill there. P1 drops. Evo falls. Storm Storm is starting to clean up. And you're on your second life here on Pleb as Habu's right in your face. Curse Crown it will stun only him, but Pleb falls to Storm Stormer, who's now dominating and on a double kill, and they still want to clean up Mad Frog. They've got creeps under the tower. They can dive the tier one. They have the ink swell. It's right onto this Dark Willow. And with the soul by now they've got the Phantom's Embrace on a bolt. So Funic, he's silenced for a moment. They bring back in P1. And Storm Stormer with the illusory orb jaunting away from the fight while still Habu is uh, in the trees and avoiding Funic and P1. I love that O1 just avoided Funic in that fight. Like they legit just walked past him twice to kill other people. It's, they have great team fight prioritization. Like they're not just killing the first thing in front of them. Somebody's making calls and the calls are very good. Uh, I also think it's cool that Habu has uh, max level Chaos Bolt instead of uh, Reality Rift, which is usually what you see is, is maxing out the Reality Rift. So you have the cooldown reduction on it. But uh, I suppose because you have the Grimstroke combo, he wants those uh, high-level stuns uh, to be doubled, which does make sense. Wowzers. Yeah, just throwing out a uh, minimum 150 or maximum 300 damage is always nice on the two targets. It is, yeah, it is. Also, he went for Soul Ring, so like with this build, he's just trying to throw as many stuns as possible during the fight. It's a, it's a cool build. Sometimes you'll see like a 2-2-4 two, two, or something like that, but uh, not usually three points in Chaos Bolt. Maybe he'll go for the Reality Rift now. Maybe he just wanted some three value points and he feels like it's enough. We'll see. Abu kind of sitting free throughout the game and he's had a couple of kills in that last fight. So he's top of the net worth. It's followed by Funic who back on this Underlord going for a Rod of Atos as his first item maybe feeling the lack of lockdown but i don't really think they lack that much lockdown if you can get the spear off and land the arena you've got the wraith fire blast bottom lane though they go after this wraith king and they drop down the arena here comes funic with the ulti use that fiend's gate to get into this one but they'll take out pleb and the soulbind goes over to p1 they have the doom out onto the mars and Nas is going to be chasing that goes into the fiend's gate just as it is uh well looking to hopefully expire and there it goes so he's out of the fight he wants courier will go down and they've taken out the wraith king they really got the main objective that they were hoping for and they almost got more than that yeah i was gonna say like no matter what happens with everybody else escaping you took out pleb like that's a god tier fight for you already if you if you take out the enemy carry 
So, uh, I, Pleb, he, he's got to take some me time, I feel like. He's been kind of the uh, focus of uh, all of the attention of 01 for the last five minutes or so, and he hasn't really had time to farm. Where is he at right now? Just 5,000 net worth. He is behind all three cores on the side of 01. And Funic has more net worth than him. Yeah. He's not really showing up to these fights. Meanwhile, that's going to help move the chains on his net worth when they get themselves two kills there. Fishman and Devil both falling, so both supports on the side of 01 uh, getting spotted out. You've got Evo who still has that double damage and wants to maybe take someone out. Up and down the Dream Core, they do have the Rod of Ato, so if they were able to spot Storm Stormer, maybe able to follow that up with a kill. But uh, I feel like that's what the Atos is for, is to, is to deal with Storm Stormer. Like, they feel like they don't have any great lockdown for the puck. It, it's something they can, they can, like, maybe catch him off guard. I don't think that's the tree he wanted. <laughs> Ooh, Habu. Meanwhile, the fight's happening over mid. They go to the arena. This will be towards the mid lane as they take out Fishman. They'll take out Storm Stormer. They got themselves two. Habu was trying to get this kill, avoids the Curse Crown, and had done so with his ult. He ends up getting Mad Frog. The objective was for Pleb, but wasn't going to get there. They lose three heroes on 01. Fight mid, fight bottom. Both teams kind of going back and forth. We're starting to see that ramp up uh, in terms of kills that we were kind of asking for in the early portions of this game. Yeah, Nos is kind of like farming during this whole time, though. Like these fights are happening. Ooh, Pleb. Ooh, he's in. Yeah, he's in. He took took out the first life of this Wraith King. But here comes Funic. He's got the Fiend's Gate. Comes in right behind Habu. He could leave if he wants to, but certainly a, a good kill to get when you take at the top of the net worth CK and put yourself there, stake your claim. We're about to have a game where both offlaners are top net worth. Fiends grip through on to Evo, and they've got the Ink Swell to follow it up. The Illusory Orb to jump and stay on top of P1. He'll decrepify and TP, but Storm Stormer goes to the Dream Coil, and they will get themselves too. Well, Storm Stormer will claim both lives. So he's now sitting six, one, and four. And he's got this, uh, he's got the switchblade. He's going into the boots of travel, blink dagger afterwards. A lot of gold being spent on mobility with the boots of travel and blink dagger purchase, if he does make it. I, I feel like the boots of travel makes sense for like the map presence. Like nobody on his team really wants to sit bot and farm it. Like Doom is gonna be, he should be fine. I mean, he's just... Storm should be. That was a little close. Oh, there's there's where the Atos comes in. Very good lockdown for the puck, at least. That's a doom. Yeah, that yes. was fine. Wait a minute. Did he, so he got doomed during Shadow Realm? Uh, shouldn't that be impossible, technically? Because there's no projectile on Doom, right? Like, either she Shadow Realm and you can't Doom her, or you Doom her and she can't Shadow Realm. Am I crazy here? Like, what the hell? That must have been some frame-perfect bullshit right there. <laughs> it's uh, frame-perfect, as the speedrunners call it, like you said. And, uh, well, Arena drop down, life drain out onto the Doom. Here comes Storm Stormer. They got the Curse Crown on to Nas. Terrorizes out. Evo, though, not doing with a lot of health. They have the Soulbind as well as the Dream Core coming in. The Ink Swell lands on a two. They'll take out Fishman, losing Storm Stormer, though. And a big chunk of their damage. And Mad Frog getting credit for that one. All five heroes here from DeBoosters. Not really fully committing on the side of 01. It looked like maybe they had their opportunity to do so, but just out of position is Storm Stormer, and that allows him to go down. Hmm. Yeah, that kind of all comes from the the doom being wasted there, where uh, Evo feels comfortable going in and you know throwing the ult down and throwing the spear onto Nas, who is getting caught out a lot. Yeah, Bramble Maze with the Pit of Malice. It's constant lockdown. Bedlam on top of him, solo target does a lot of damage. 
And Evo, well, Habu's trying to trade. It's a 4v1, the life drain's on him. He's been decrepified, disarmed, and Evo gets to walk away. Fishman, though, looking for the Fiend's Grip. That's exactly what he'll grab, but it's only on to Funnick. Funnick pretty tanky, eating up the entirety of this Fiend's Grip. He'll look over, P1 drops the Habu. Manfrog dies, but Habu traded by Evo. And that is not the guy you want to drop, as they've already lost the Doom. And Malice comes out, the Illusory are about, the Nightmare out through onto Pleb. Radiant's top tower is under attack. D boosters Radiant's are doing a really good job at fire. turning like fairly minor in the grand scheme of things mistakes into just like bleeding from O1. Like they they turn this doom being wasted into uh into a one team fight, then they use the uh, underlord ultimate to go bot, they clean up the uh uh, they clean up the doom and then ck goes in to try to make that look good and then all of a sudden ck goes down and they get the carry as well like it's just been bleeding from the side of o1 for a couple of minutes now i mean they still have a gold lead but looking real good for d boosters yeah it feels like their gold lead is a little bit more inflated due to the doom yeah um, for sure and then of course wraith king pleb who is behind all three cores on the side of O1, now ahead of them all, and the Underworld. And he's got a bottle DD with the Deso. That's a, this is a solid timing. I, I would smoke right now. Do they have one? They do have one. Yeah, they're gonna go. I meant smoke. And again, they're pretty split. They've got Habu and Devil together, but three heroes top. I feel like they could just walk into Roche and just start slamming it. But they uh, they want more. They want to kill. Or maybe they don't feel safe rushing against the puck. Oh, they actually just let the smoke time out. All right. Hm. You know, that's that's actually an, a very underrated thing in Dota where uh, like a lot of people feel like if you smoke, you have to connect. So you like use the smoke and then you jump on a target that's just stupid like it just doesn't make any sense and then you lose the team fight because the smoke just like didn't pan out in the first place like the ability to call off smokes is actually like a, a super underrated thing that i think uh like the better you get at dota the more you'll see smokes and then the higher and higher rating you go after that the more you see people smoking but screwing up smokes because people on the enemy team are good at reacting to them so it becomes a more valuable skill to know when to not do something, which is funny. It's funny how that works. Yeah, you don't want to force an issue or, or force a play to happen. That's not going to no. happen you. It can be worse than just doing nothing at all. They smoke down this time on 01, and they're going to try and go for Funnick. Funnick's been tanky in these fights. Booster's looking to set up around this, and whoa, Pleb with the double damage just rips through Storm Stormer on the other side. And again, that maybe is similar to what you were saying in forcing a smoke. A Fiend's Gate over to the other side of the fight. They still have this double damage and nightmare, but spear out onto Fishman, and that is another kill for Pleb. Starting to really rip apart these heroes on 01. And they could go off right into Roche off this. Yeah, with Deso, with the lifesteal they have, they, they definitely have the damage to take Roche. Uh, no, the question is, who do they give this to? I don't feel like it's that good on Wraith King. I mean, Evo's level 14, though, so I don't know if you want to give Roche to him either. Funic is Underlord. I don't feel like he's going to die. I mean, I guess Pleb. I guess you just give Pleb three lives and have him, like, go Siege or something. Not exactly the best Aegis uh, situation for them. But they're, they're going to be happy with this regardless, of course. Yeah, you take it out of the hands of 01. You don't give them that opportunity. You get yourself a third life on the Wraith King, who Pleb has been doing a great job in just starting to dominate these fights. And I, I do wonder, like, we're 01 a little bit too quick off the line in terms of wanting to fight, right? Like, those fights early went well but then you're not prioritizing taking advantage of the map you're looking for these kills you're not farming nearly as much like have they tried too much to fight and that didn't work out for them does habu bkb tp oh 
Oh, that's a bit greedy, dude. All right, he's fine. He's fine. I've just seen that exact scenario where, like, you don't want to use the BKB to TP because then your BKB is on cooldown. You can't fight. You get greedy. All of a sudden, somebody throws out a bramble and uh, or blinks into the trees randomly. They catch you, and, like, it's a disaster because you don't have the TP up. But, no, he's, he's fine. I think... 01, the way they want to look to win the next fight is they like they basically have to hit a double doom. That's Storm Stormer. Oh, he is God, really he rough. Is, yeah, terrorized, curse crown, life drain. They have the catch. I say that. And now he's able to blink over to the side, illusory orb to the other way. <laughs> he's bringing them on a little bit of a Benny Hill adventure. Oh, right into Flep. <laughs> right into Flep. <laughs> oh, dear. Well, uh, I see what he was going for. I, I really do like it. He's trying to stall. He's trying to cut the waves. He's puck. He's hard to catch. Pleb was just reading him like a book, though. Like, Pleb was there. Um, but I think the way that O1 wants to win fights is they got, they got a double doom. I don't see how they win a fight if they don't have, like, you know, Mars plus the Pugna doomed or something like that. That just seems like their easiest option. Because, like, a, a triple coil is not going to result in anything, right? Uh, so, like, what else can they do? That, uh... Something just happened on the non-replay that's very important, by the way. Doom just used his Doom on a Mars illusion. It was an illusion rune that was just kind of running around, so... They know that he doesn't have Doom right now. Uh, this is... This is bad. Yeah, you've been telling me that <laughs> their game plan might be based on getting a double Doom. Well, they don't have that option for the next two minutes. Uh, yeah, they have the, they can double Fiend's Grip, but we've seen this Willow and the effectiveness against the Fiend's Grip. Like, it, just because you have two Fiend's Grips doesn't limit the effectiveness of the Willow. It's still one Bane that you have to cancel, so... Uh, it's all about that Doom, which was just used. Uh, so, basically, D-Boosters has uh, free reign on this game for the next, let me go ahead and see, 89 seconds. Which, coincidentally, I don't know, the entirety of the length of Aegis being reclaimed. So, my thought is, he used the Doom knowing this to have an Aegis timer himself. Oh, smart. And that way his team doesn't want to fight. Because if, you know, it's like, guys, I don't have Doom. And they're like, all right, all right. He just thinks the game plan should be evasive maneuvers. Cat and mouse. Smart. <laughs> me getting involved again. Yeah, those bastards that act me. They always get involved somehow. How did this picture of a train tunnel look so real? It ran right <laughs> into it. They probably made the guitar that Doom is using. That seems like an acme esque sort of uh, invention. In onto the CK, they've got the arena, they'll land the spear, Habu. Well, he did have BKB available, never got a chance to get it off, and he ends up dead. It's, it's a Fiend's Gate right into the fight, and a tier three down because of the booster's might. This is looking more and more like we're gonna go to a game three, which, uh, which is great, which is awesome. Uh, this is looking like a real competitive series, actually. I think it's really hard for Owen for O1 to O win this game. I, it, I like they legit need like refresher on Doom and Grimstroke or something like that. Uh, just the stuff they have to do in a team fight is asking way too much. Back up. It is expiring in just about 10 seconds. Terrorize sends him back. Doom up into the face of these heroes, and well, Devil will get the kill onto Evo. Out of Atos thrown out. Pleb loses his first life. And well, while that's happening, they're gonna clean up Fishman. So it's a double kill for Funic. The right clicks in from Habu, starting to output quite a bit on the Pleb. Pleb needs to be a little bit careful here as the right clicks, the ink swell, it'll pop, and the Wraith King goes down. Devil takes out P1, Devil falls to Funic. Storm Storm is thinking about who he wants to go in on, and well, now the answer is Funic, but he pops his BKB, so Storm Stormer puts the attention out onto Mad Frog. That's gonna be four. He'll go for the TP from Funic with the BKB, and I guess losing two tier threes, a melee racks, but getting those kills is considered a hole. 
Yep, Stormstormer's playing out of his mind this game, trying to uh, trying to carry it back from the brink. So first off, he cuts the creep wave mid, which makes it so the second set of racks cannot go down. So there's just this fight here with backdoor protection on. And then in that fight, he was just constantly throwing out orbs and waning rifts on multiple heroes, hitting an ink swell on multiple heroes, getting multiple witch blades off. Like he did a ton of damage in that fight. Habu hadn't even respawned until like right at the end of that fight. So uh, that was like mostly carried off of the back of Stormstormer's puck. Take a look at this once again. Two man stun, doom out onto the Mars. And an Inkswell with it, they pop the dream. That's a nice oh, fear, but yeah, not not enough. He fears and, and the rest of the team was a bit too far back to really jump and capitalize on that. I Okay, I also do think now looking back at this replay, there is a big element of like, the cores were diving pretty deep and the two supports on the Pugna and the, and the Willow, like they were trying to help out and uh, Stormstormer was just like messing with them on the back lines. So like good on Stormstormer to assault the back lines like that. Like that's just good Dota. That's good team fighting. But also for D boosters, that was a bit of a ballsy dive. Like that is going to put your backliners out of position because they're going to try to go in to help you, right? Otherwise you just die. So bit of a mistake from D boosters and capitalization on that mistake from uh, from O1. But uh, I do, I do still feel like D boosters. Like they're in a pretty solid spot right now. I mean, Funic has not died once this game. Uh, that was a bit of a throw, though, for sure. Just the question becomes like, if they do that again, does the do the scales tilt in the favor of O1 enough to start to take this back? If they hit a double doom with this smoke, uh, yeah, I definitely, I definitely think so. Uh, they have Shiva's on Doom. The Grimstroke actually almost has an Aghanim Scepter. Uh, maybe I was counting them out of this game a little too quickly because I think with the Ags on Grimstroke, Wraith King's one of the best illusions you can possibly get. You get the crit. Uh, he struggles to kill the illusion himself too. It's just this super fast magic immune version of him. Because you, you get, let's see, what's the move speed bonus? 30% illusion move speed bonus and Wraith King's base move speed is so high. So that's that's the problem. What do you, you you want O1 to land that double doom of course and try and take that fight? But if you're de boosters, do you force a fight here? Do you want to just make the jump? I think if they can kill Grimstroke first for de boosters, it's very hard for O1 to fight. But uh, Devil's done a pretty damn good job at just staying in the back lines for this whole game. Like he's being very safe. Oh, there goes the mid range. There goes the bottom range. So your mid setter acts are gone. They will find themselves Mad Frog. The question is, do they find anything else? That's an early BKB from Nas. Eventually, Mad Frog will fall. The rest of the team retreats, but they got the buildings that they wanted. So that's not really an awful trade for them. They're staying for a second. I thought maybe they even think about going in again without this Dark Willow. He does have buyback too, and they have the they have the outposts. So I, th I think that's why they're sticking around here. They realize like he could, worst case, get back to the fight quickly. Roche up in 15, so Roche for either of these sides might be enough to lock in the game. Is this the like second or third Roche? I don't remember how many there are. Just the second. Okay. So we'll have an Aghanim Shard. Any busted ag shards this game i mean it's good to mars against the uh, ck illusions because you can actually get multi you can you're more likely to get the actual ck if he ults i like the grim stroke they're gonna go for pleb they got a three second stun the damage coming in there's the arena as well as the spear comes in on a fish man but they took out the first life on the wraith king get him out down the hex is through all the way out onto this pot but storm storm is not dead just yet the terrorized lands and throws him into the pit of mouse the curse crown is on top of nas but he pops the bkb they got the Fiend's Grip through onto the Mars. Evo drops back into the Fiend's Gate. They'll go to bail on this one and pull the ejection cord. However, not too far away. And Storm Stormer gets ripped up. Out a little bit too far and dropping the gem. 
Value Hex from Funnick. I, I really like that pickup. Like his entire game has basically been to deal with the puck like he gets the Atos, which we saw multiple times deal with the puck, gets the BKB, that's a magic damage first to puck, and then the Scythe to deal with puck in the late game. We take a look at this replay. They got the first life out of the hands of Pleb. They also threw the Doom on him. But the follow-up just isn't there because of the terrorize from Mad Frog. So he's able to get Man. Every terrorize has been sick from him, actually. Fiends grab, lock up the Mars. Fiends Gate's actually not even that far away. I didn't recognize that immediately, that it was only just outside the base. But Puck buys back. Storm Stormer wants to make sure that they can't get this Roche. Plebs has just been soloing Roche in there. Hobby's like, what the hell is that he, that I'm hearing? Uh, Another word on the ground, a loser orb over. You definitely don't want to fight in this uh, level four nether ward. Spell damage gonna go reduction for... and uh, damage per mana is going to be gross. Looks like they're yeah they're going for the they're going for the big wrap around. This is the uh, this is the patient play. They're not just going to walk up the obvious high ground. Uh, they're going to look to take out the CK first. They will it's walk an into him. Spot. He pops the smoke, but he walks in anyway. Apex. The Hex, the Arena, the Spear, it's all on Ahabu. They'll look for the Terrorize. The life drain out on Ahabu. They'll drain his entire HP. Pool. Double Fiend's Grip. They've got the Double Fiend's Grip, but can they get anything out of this one? They drop the Dream Coil down. Habu buys back into the fight. The life drain coming through from P1. That's out onto the bane. They land the Spear through out onto Doom. Now, Nas trying to survive. Inkswell pops. Doesn't land on anybody, but Habu gets the right click kill on a P1 who doesn't have buyback. The Stroke of Fate lands onto Evo and slows him down. Fishman down to Funic as Evo falls to Habu. And on the other side of the fight, Storm Stormer will take out Mad Frog. They go after Devil. Cleb gets the kill on that one. He's going to try and fight Habu, who bought back, but they've got the help from Funic. They have themselves the Bane of Malice, but the four seconds stun, the Reality Rift, the Terrorize, not enough to save Pleb. And they'll go after Habu with the Bedlam. Solo target doing a lot of damage. Mad Frog gets the kill. He bought back. Funic, this man doesn't die. This man's got the damage. Yes, Hex in four. Four seconds until he's got that Hex. He's level 25. They've got Mad Frog chasing for more. They bought back on Pleb because they know these heroes do not have buyback on the side of 01 Esports. They might have just found themselves a finishing opening here to take out the base of 01. Are they willing to stay up against the puck as well as the doom? That is the question you did buy back on Pleb. If he dies again, would be cause for concern. Funnick, though, he is 9-0 and 12. And with that cause for concern, they will back off of this base and, and just get themselves an Aegis so they can work a little bit safer. On on one hand, I want to say that I like that 01 is doing such a good job at ignoring Funnick's entire existence. Like, they're just never going on him. They're running past him and going on anybody else. However, he's making himself a problem. Like, with the Hex and the items that he's going and just going for the back lines. He needs to be dealt with. They almost get him in this fight, but he BKBs and then TPs out, which means he's able to Fiendsgate back into the, to, like I said, the back lines. Comes right in. Takes out Fishman, who could have gotten another round of spells off, but he didn't. And then Habu ends up going down at the end of this. They have no way to kill Funny. No, he's feeling kind of unkillable at this point. BKB was a very solid choice. And he's level 25, so he's got the extra duration on the Pit of Malice. Surprised he doesn't have uh, an Aghanim Scepter. I mean, at this point, just give the big boy next Roshan. Give him his next, give him the Ags off of Rosh. Now he'll go for a refresher on this one and they'll start to try and take the bottom set of racks or well what's left of it, the melee racks. Yeah, Storm Stormer needing to be careful. If he accidentally were to waning rift into the pit of malice, he would be in a lot of trouble. Just it covers so much ground. Not real. It does. It does. In. And Funic has a refresher now too. So that's double BKB, double Atos, double Scythe, 
double pit of malice that's a lot of lockdown right there that, that's like 15 seconds of chain lockdown or something May, maybe even more because i no that'd probably be a bit be about 15 seconds two fiends gates as well for the next fight that's gonna be pretty insane i mean i feel like that's so many buttons that like you're gonna forget to press one or two of them even if you're on Phonix level, it's like, it's, it's way too much in an intense game like this, too. These all belong to me. We gotta stay on the move. Mm, but I'm worth Wondering so much more. what the, what O1 can do here to bring this back. It feels like these fights they are getting some of these kills, but they can't deal with Phonix. They've gotten Pleb, but of course he's working with an Aegis this time around, so multiple lives left for him. I think the problem, like, the problem is, and it's not, it's easier said than done to do this, by the way, but they have not gotten the double doom off in like five team fights or something. And that is the strongest combo that they have on their team. That's the strongest thing they have going for them. So I think it's fairly obvious to, to them. They're going to know that like, that's something that they want to aim for. It's just that it's not always that easy. Like you need the Grim and the Doom to both be there, both be alive. Neither of them have to be disabled. And the enemy team has to have two targets that are value dooms standing right in front of the Grimstroke because this Grimstroke doesn't have a BK or he, does, he doesn't have a well he doesn't have a BKB for sure but he doesn't have a blink dagger so like he can't just blink in see two targets and go on them like it does take the right set of things to happen but that is what you're going to aim for and the more and more you fall behind the more it becomes required that you that you do that he does have the dark portrait too though so uh he's going to have a Wraith King illusion which means he could probably solo the Pugna you might have two illusions too if you get the double doom, double dark portrait. Dream coil committed. Mad frog blinks away. Oh, and storm stormer wants to chase this, but I don't know if that's going to be the right move as the rest of the team is starting to come on in. Nas popping the BKB goes to the spider legs. There's the soul bind. They finally get the kill on the mad frog. They'll use the doom. Or they'll use the soul bind. They'll use the dark portrait. Devil in some trouble. So is Nas, and Nas can't get the doom off. So they are without that for two minutes. He's got no buyback. Pleb going in on the Habu. They have the Hex. They have the control. They'll get this kill. They'll take him out for 90. Storm Stormer trying to hold on to what he can for the, him and the team. They find P1. The Inkswell lands. It stuns up Funnick. But again, they just don't have the damage to kill the Underlord. They've caught Storm Stormer. The Pit of Malice is down. He's gone for two minutes. And now it's just supports against the world, uh, looking likely that we're going to a game three. Devil does have the dark portrait. He can do some real sick shit with the Wraith King illusion. Maybe they like nightmare the Wraith King and they're taking a, oh, they're gonna call GG. <laughs> They'll call it and we'll go to a game three between both these teams who have certainly shown up today. It, it's supposed to be the, the top two teams in the region, and they're showing why. They go back and forth, so the Boosters getting themselves a victory and making this series one apiece. That looked like it was going Owen's way for a little while, especially towards the early parts of that game. But eventually, the Boosters, they pull it out, and they find themselves a, a, a good victory. It wasn't easy. It wasn't, like, very one-sided. Their gameplay was nice. Things came out clean, and I, I think they played a really good game, too. Yeah, they did for sure. I, I really like that they lose game one with the Underlord. It gets largely ignored despite having like a very good showing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, O1 obviously feels like they can beat it. And Funic just shows them like, no, no, you can't. Like, I'm just I'm just too good at this hero. Uh, that's just really cool to see. I, I, I love the confidence. And uh, man, the, the Willow Fears that game were absolutely insane for Mad Frog too. That seems like a really good answer to the Bane, and I think if you're playing yep. against Fishman, you gotta have an answer to the Bane, man. This guy's almost Grandmaster. He probably doesn't even do the quests and he's level 28. Like, you gotta counter the Bane. So yeah, well played by D-Boosters, and I'm excited to see uh, game three. Yeah, so we'll see who will take the series, but before we get back with that game three, we're gonna take a quick break, and then it 